by the authority given in the statutes of the Open University, I declare this congregation open for the conferment of degrees and presentation of graduates. Distinguished guests, graduates and friends of the university, it is my privilege and pleasure to welcome you all to the eighth of the Open University's degree ceremonies being held in 2019. We're delighted to welcome the Mayor and Mayoress of Ely, Councillor Michael Rouse and Ms Lauren Rouse, who have found time in their busy diaries to be with us today. Each year, the Open University awards a range of qualifications, from Certificate of Higher Education to Doctor of Philosophy. Throughout 2019, more than 6,000 graduates are being presented for their qualifications at degree ceremonies uh, such as the one in Ely today. These are being held in 10 different towns and cities throughout England and also in Belfast, Cardiff, Glasgow and Dublin. This illustrates the extraordinary scale, scope and reach of the Open University. Now it goes without saying that today is a very important occasion in the life of you, our graduates, your families and loved ones, as well as the university staff who, I hope you will feel, have nurtured and supported you. Now you could be forgiven for thinking that the occasion is so important that it needs to be solemn. Well, you'd be quite wrong. In every sense, this is a day of celebration. So we will be very disappointed if anyone crosses the stage to anything less than thunderous applause or whatever other way you choose to express your enthusiasm and support. So with that in mind, why don't all of today's graduates briefly stand? Friends, family and Open University staff, let's start today by giving them a huge round of applause. Thank you, you can sit down again. Now there's one more way you can show your appreciation to your graduate. If you post messages or photos on social media, use the hashtag, hashtag OUFamily, that's hashtag OUFamily, to share your congratulations and celebrations with the world outside, as well as with everyone here today at the ceremony. Today's ceremony will begin with the presentation of those graduates who have gained higher degrees and first degrees of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Engineering and Bachelor of Laws and have been able to attend here today. They will be presented by Mr. Nicholas McCart, Director of Operations, Student Recruitment and Fees in our Academic Services Department. We will then continue our presentation of graduates with those who have gained Bachelor of Science degrees, Foundation degrees and Diploma of Higher Education. And to conclude the ceremony, I will give a personal address to the graduates. I now call upon Mr. McCart to present the graduates. Pro Vice-Chancellor, I shall now present graduates who have gained higher degrees and have been able to attend here today. For the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, I present to you for a thesis entitled A Study of the Experience of Listening to Music in World War II Britain, Kerry ann Edinburgh. And for a thesis entitled, Sparse Linear Discriminant Analysis with More Variables Than Observations, Tsige Gebru. <laughs> for
for a thesis entitled, It's the Secret of the Universe, the Communicative Constitution and Routinization of a Dominant Authoritative Text within a UK Cosmetics Company, David Hollis. For a thesis entitled, Irish Travelling Artists, Ireland, Southern Asia and the British Empire, 1760 to 1850, Siobhan McDermott. <laughs> for a thesis entitled, Multi-Agent System for Real-Time Video Umpiring, Nien Omar Miet. For a thesis entitled, Application of Transformations of Orthogonality, M.D. Shabuz. <laughs> and for a thesis entitled, Novel Luminescent Lanthanide Complexes as Reporters of Cellular Oxidative Stress, Bianca Vitiello. For the degree of Doctorate in Education, I present to you for a thesis entitled Investigating ePortfolios from Teacher Training to the Workplace, Dominique Allen Jan. <laughs> for the degree of Master of Research, I present to you for a thesis entitled Digital Literacies for International Teacher Education, a Ghanaian Perspective. Lisa Maria Tanner. I present to you for the degree of Master of Arts in Art History, Sharon Newton. For the degree of Master of Arts in Childhood and Youth, I present Stephen Snelling. For the degree of Master of Arts in Classical Studies, I present Anna Fern. <laughs> Michael Gurner. <laughs> Patricia Soskin. Stephen Stanley. <laughs> Samantha Westaway. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Arts in Creative Writing with Distinction, I present Victor Gent. For the degree of Master of Arts in Creative Writing, I present Efoo Akoto. <laughs> Sue Burton Griffiths. <laughs> Alan Clark. Julie Gilligan. Jim McElroy. Linda Suter.
For the degree of Master of Arts in Education, I present Alfonso Garcia. Linda Pearson. For the degree of Master of Arts in English, I present Gillian Begent. Claire Gale. For the degree of Master of Arts in English, I present Caroline Cutting. Yvonne Moore. Angela Parkinson. <laughs> Nigel Pierce. Jessica Wilson. For the degree of Master of Arts in History, I present Christopher Owens. For the degree of Master of Arts in Music and a Bachelor of Science Honours, I present Ruth Proctor. For the degree of Master of Arts in Philosophy, I present Darren Poynton. Anthony Pryor. For the degree of Master of Arts in Translation, I present Helen Mystery Tischhauser. Michelle Perez Locho. For the degree of Master of Business Administration, I present Sandy Bapti. Christopher Church. Lindsay Goodwin. Graham Ling. Adam Ramsey. For the degree of Master of Business Administration Healthcare Leadership, I present Michael Short. For the degree of Master of Education, I present Maisie German. For the degree of Master of Engineering, I present William Rhodes. For the degree of Master of Laws, I present Joanne Spick. For the degree of Master of Science in Advanced Networking, I present David Garoud. Steve Page. For the degree of Master of Science in Computing, I present Porig Makoska. <laughs> For
For the degree of Master of Science in Computing with Commerce and Industry with Distinction, I present Michael Neve. For the degree of Master of Science in Earth Science with Distinction, I present Fiona Williams. For the degree of Master of Science in Earth Science, I present Brian Henderson. Mandy Lavender. For the degree of Master of Science in Finance, I present Mark Davies. Chantelle Disbrow. For the degree of Master of Science in Human Resource with distinction, I present Melanie Robinson. For the degree of Master of Science Open, I present Heath Graham. And for the degree of Master of Science in Science with Distinction, I present Charlotte Sturgis. <laughs> Pro Vice Chancellor, I shall now present graduates who have gained Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Engineering, and Bachelor of Laws degrees and have been able to attend here today. The full subject details are printed in the insert within the ceremony programme. I present, for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with First Class Honours, Dory Cooper. <laughs> Francis Roth. Emma Tonkin. For the degree of Bachelor of Arts with Honours, I present Becky Cairns. Charlotte Cairns. Amy De Rosa, Kalpana Damasina, Judith Friend, Victoria Gentry. Lizzie Gudja. <laughs> Joe Hall. <laughs> Katie Herbert. <laughs> Louise King. Carly Ludon. Amy Mangum Ward. Marie Claire Mosley. Shannon Riglin. Samantha Robinson. <laughs> Jessica Ryle.
Mandy Sheldrake. Charlotte Smith. Jonathan Smith. Paul Smith. Joyce Stevens. Steve Tarrant. Rebecca Wilding. For the degree of Bachelor of Arts, I present Catherine Frankish. For the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Social Work with First Class Honours, I present Lisa Hawksford. For the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Social Work with Honours, I present Linda Carnero. Rachel Gipp. Amanda Kane Kennedy. Lisa Mansfield. Stephanie Moore. Warren Sharp. For the degree of Bachelor of Engineering with Honours, I present Andrew Griffiths. <laughs> Philip Shreha. <laughs> Nigel Tuttle. And for the degree of Bachelor of Laws with honours, I present Rosanna Branch. <laughs> Michael Sackett. <laughs> Pro Vice-Chancellor, we now come to the part of today's ceremony that marks the presentation of graduates who have gained Bachelor of Science degrees foundation degrees and diplomas of higher education and have been able to attend here today. The full subject details are printed in the insert within the ceremony programme. I present for the degree of Bachelor of Science with First Class Honours, Sophie Adlam. <laughs> Kelly Beer. Lucy Button. Kate Carpenter. Jacqueline Gibson. Sarah Giles. <laughs> Simon Napper. <laughs> Holly Roper. <laughs> Daniel Shaw.
For the degree of Bachelor of Science with Honours, I present Stephen Beatty. Okay. Laura Brand. Melvin Burton. David Cabello. <laughs> Susan Kahn. <laughs> Howard Carter. <laughs> Russell Denton. Alice Edmondson. <laughs> Becky Flu. <laughs> Alison Foster. <laughs> Julie Grove. Daniel Hayter. <laughs> Phil Howe. <laughs> Jane Howe. <laughs> Claire Jones. William Jones. <laughs> Joanne Kelsall. <laughs> Helen Large. <laughs> Abigail Martin. Nigel Mather. <laughs> Carl Mitchell. 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 Anika Mohe. <laughs> Natalia Morris. Rebecca Munn. Robert Peach. Simono Poscute. David Priddle. Joanne Reynolds. <laughs> Rebecca Stimpson. <laughs> Malgozato Asala. Jacqueline Webster. <laughs> Robert White. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Science, I present David Eveling. David Loxley Blount.
For the degree of Bachelor of Science in Adult Nursing with First Class Honours, I present Victoria Thorpe. For the degree of Bachelor of Science in Adult Nursing with Honours, I present Lucy Bowers-Smith. Lisa Caducci. Emma Chapman. Julie Ely, <laughs> Joanne Elms, <laughs> Jody Fessy, <laughs> Simone Green. Kathleen Gribbin. <laughs> Stuart Hunter Brown. <laughs> Rachel Johnson. <laughs> Claire Knight. Catherine Poulter. <laughs> Ian Squire. Fiona Wolford. Tracy Watts. <laughs> Elizabeth Westwood. <laughs> Lisa Wistance. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Science in Mental Health Nursing with honours, I present Sophie Reader. <laughs> Charlie Renforth. <laughs> For a foundation degree, I present Laura Faircloth. Victoria Wright. For a Diploma of Higher Education, I present Cherry Button. Louise Cole. Mark Fagan. Sarah Haywood. Christy Marshall.
Somebody had a powerful grip out there. Good afternoon, everyone. Guests, staff, and of course, our wonderful graduates. This has been a very special day for everyone here, one we hope you will remember for the rest of your lives. It's a huge privilege for me to share this very special occasion with you and absolutely the best part of my job. I've seen so many fabulous smiles today and heard so many inspiring stories. The, the amount of time that people are taking to complete their studies varies enormously. Uh, from three years to 20 years, I heard, coming across the stage today. However long it took, that's a great achievement. Really well done. Each of you is extraordinary, but together, you're even more extraordinary. I believe that you are the most important and amazing body of graduates anywhere in the UK. In, fa in fact, today, all of you, your friends and supporters, are probably sharing this auditorium with the most extraordinary people you're ever likely to meet. For family, friends and supporters, you know the incredible efforts that your graduate went to in, in achieving their qualification. But many of you, and many of our graduates today, won't know very much about the other graduates here and just how amazing you are as a group as a whole. And I'd like to spend a couple of moments really just finding out how amazing you are. So I'm going to ask a few questions of our graduates. Uh, and I'd like you, if you can, to raise your hand uh, in relation to some of these questions. So the first question I have is, put your hand up if you helped bring up a family during your study. Okay. Hands up if you had any caring responsibilities during your study. <laughs> and hands up if you were employed or did voluntary work at some time during your study. And finally, and, and please don't put your hand up if you'd rather not to or if it's tricky for you, but who carried out their study while registered with a disability? <laughs> now, some disabled students are naturally unable to attend, so the numbers of students with disabilities studying with us are much higher than the show of hands we see today. In fact, overall, we have over 22,000 students with disabilities who are studying with us. That is not only more than any other university in the UK, but almost more than all of the other universities put together. As you saw, almost every student here has needed to fulfill some other obligation alongside their study. Compare that with students at conventional universities whose extra duties might only extend to the sports team or indeed their commitment to the student bar. Your efforts are so much greater. You are members of a university that believes that where you start in life shouldn't limit where you go. From this day forward, you join an exclusive alumni club of more than half a million OU graduates across the globe. They, like you, studied part-time where they held down a job or brought up a family or cared for dependent relatives or possibly all of these things. Part-time study, it sounds more like double time to me. Now let me tell you a little bit about the OU that you might not know. We are 50 years old this year. 50 years of being in a class of our own by providing incredible learning opportunities for over two million people over that time. And we are proud to share this anniversary year with another memorable event, the Apollo moon landing. Now, some of you may have seen a moon lurking about in this cathedral somewhere. When the Apollo astronauts first brought back rock samples, studied, studies then concluded that the moon was devoid of water. However, more recently, world-renowned space researchers at the Open University have shown that moon rocks contain much more water than previously thought. Our teams are building new tools for both the European Space Agency and for NASA 
that will reach, that will search for water on and below the lunar surface. And looking further ahead, we are now investigating how to exploit the resources that are present on the surface of the moon by extracting a plentiful supply of water and using surface dust to create building materials. This will be in the future a critical step towards designing a lunar base for humans. Now, as some of you may have seen, we've been celebrating our birthday with many activities across the country and on TV. Uh, some of you may have seen Lenny Henry presenting uh, a TV programme recently about the history of the Open University. And we've also been holding a series of events highlighting and profiling some of our high quality research. We also have a series of free history lectures through our Open Talk series. If you go to our website at open.ac.uk, you can access all of this and read about not only our amazing story, but also the stories of our amazing students. An OU qualification is something to be very proud of, something well recognized and well respected. For half a century now, the OU's impact has been phenomenal. From the oceans to the universe, our world-leading research has shaped our understanding of the seas and the skies. And taking that knowledge into people's living rooms has been happening since the early 1970s with the OU BBC partnership, where we've broadcast thousands of hours of programmes. Now, some of you may have seen some of those recently. If you watched Blue Planet 2, I'm sure some of you did, we were involved in that. Indeed, half the UK population watched a program that the OU helped to make. We're very proud of the research we conduct at the OU. Uh, the last evaluation nationally, nearly three quarters of our research was deemed to be world leading or internationally excellent. I'll give you one or two examples. Through our Center for Policing Research and Learning, we're improving policing practices in areas such as cybercrime and the use of social media for police work. We're also doing our bit to tackle hate and online extremism by creating virtual field trips for young people in susceptible communities to help foster inclusiveness. In the world of health, we're researching how the use of virtual personal assistants like Google Home or Alexa can enhance the quality of end-of-life care. And in the field of international development, we are focusing on the skills, uh, skills needs of mobile populations of migrants and how these mobile populations are challenging notions of citizenship and rights. We're also very engaged with employers too. With over 70 of the FTSE 100 companies sponsoring staff to study with the OU. From small businesses to the NHS, the OU inspires both employers and employees to create better futures. In fact, a recent government survey found that employers perceive part-time students to be, and I quote, hardworking, committed and disciplined, and recognize the importance of supporting their employees' study aspirations. Now, seven years ago, the OU led the way in digital innovation too, when we set up the UK's first platform for massive online open courses, or MOOCs as they're known, through an initiative called FutureLearn. This online resource provides free learning for over 8 million learners across the globe. And we keep on giving. Anyone can take their pick of the thousand bite-sized free courses on our award-winning site, OpenLearn. Lifelong learning is available at the click of a mouse. Internationally, we're doing wonderful work too, often with those who need our help the most. Our Zambian Education School, based training project, ZEST for short, saw the OU working with international partners World Vision to train up to 4,000 primary school teachers and leaders across Zambia's central province. Closer to home, the OU is working with 21 police forces across the UK to train the next generation of police officers. And the learning doesn't stop for people in prison either who want to turn their lives around. We help them too. Changing lives is exactly what the OU is about and has been about for the last 50 years. So in graduating today, you become a member of a university that is a world leader in technology, in innovation, and in helping people to learn. We are indeed a movement of millions. 
with a mission of one to educate. There are a host of people, though, who have contributed to your achievements today, and we shouldn't forget them either. From the advisor who handled your first inquiry, the academics who designed and wrote your course materials, to the student services staff who supported you when it felt like you couldn't go on. And of course, our amazing associate lecturers who guided you through the whole journey, culminating in you crossing the stage today. So let's take a moment to say thank you to the OU staff who made all of this possible. But there is only one thing that's harder than being an OU student, and that's living with one. We must not underestimate the incredible support you've had from family and friends to enable you to keep going with your studies. So graduates, take a look around and see if you can spot them in the audience, and let's give them a huge round of applause as well. When you leave today, you become an ambassador for the Open University and all that it stands for. Please do stay in touch. Join our alumni careers group, Tucan, on LinkedIn. Share your professional experience and make new connections. Try one of our free online courses. Or maybe, when you've had time to pause and recover, think about continuing your study with us. You may already have been congratulated by members of our alumni team. They will be in touch to tell you what our alumni association can offer, as well as ways you can give back to your university through our Open Up the Future 50th anniversary campaign. If you haven't already done so, please visit our careers and employability stand. Both the alumni and careers team are here, based in the Hayward Theatre, where you had your photos taken. Remember, you can receive free careers and employability advice for up to three years after you graduate. We are really interested to know how the unique qualities of being an OU graduate help you in your careers, in your life ambitions, and in your personal development. The more we know, the more we can convince those who feel nervous or unsure about embarking on part-time distance learning themselves. You are a personification of the motto on our crest, learn and live. Take the opportunity to continue to do that and to support others in their learning journey. Now, before we come to a close, um, may I ask all of our graduates to stand once more and for us all to give, us, give them one further round of congratulatory applause. Proceedings of this degree ceremony have been completed and I now declare this meeting of congregation closed. Would all of you who are able to do so please stand and please join us for a celebratory drink outside in the gardens afterwards. Thank you very much. <laughs>